Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to 10 for 10 presented by Brett James and Lunchbox. 10 for 10 is a segment where we talk about 10 different topics across the NFL and the NBA in recent news to keep you guys updated on everything going across both leagues and associations as well. Make sure you guys go follow us on both of our social media accounts on TikTok, Instagram, and on Twitter. I'm going to link to those down in the description below. But let's stop wasting time and let's hop right into the first topic. The first topic I'm going to be talking about is Draymond Green addressing his comments regarding players sitting out and teams forcing these guys to sit out because of trade demands. The most recent example Draymond Green was talking about was when the Cleveland Cavaliers were playing against the Golden State Warriors. The Cleveland Cavaliers who have been looking to shop Andre Drummond after he opted into that $28 million player option this year. Andre Drummond was told to sit out versus the Golden State Warriors and Draymond Green popped off against that because essentially he's saying that these players do not have the focal power and the vocal power that these organizations do and the criticism is not held the same and the accountability is not held the same so if a player was to tell the organization hey look i don't want to play here i do not want to be here you need to trade me i am not going to be playing i'm going to be sitting out watching the team the amount of criticism a player would get would be insurmountable versus an organization who can clearly tell a guy like a blake griffin like an andre drummond hey look you guys we're trying to trade you. You guys need to sit out. So Draymond Green saying, if you're going to keep that energy for the players, keep that same energy for the team. And I completely agree with him 100%. Now, speaking of Andre Drummond, I do want to say that I think that is a little bit unfair that he has been sat out. I don't agree with these franchises telling these players to sit out completely when they're healthy. They're COVID free. They literally told him, you are going to go back in there. You're going to sit down and watch the team in the middle of your game when you're completely healthy and you're fine the cleveland cavaliers are still not a great team they have looked a lot better this year including a guy like colin sexton some trade rumors i'd love to see andre drummond would be in boston they've been struggling this year as well kemba walker's definitely had a bit of a slip up of a year i don't think it's time to press the panic button if i'm brad stevens and the celtics i think andre drummond would be a much better fit in that paint than a guy like a daniel tice i would much rather have him coming off the bench and robert williams I think the Celtics need a big upgrade like him or a Vucevic as well in the middle. So I would love to see Andre Drummond go in there. On to the next topic. Let's talk about Blake Griffin. Another guy that the Pistons are looking to either buy out or trade. I don't think that there's going to be any viable trade options for a guy like Blake Griffin. Jalen Rose actually just came on set the other day on ESPN and just announced that Blake Griffin has not dunked in a game since 2019. That is a whole calendar year and a half. Blake Griffin has not dunked in a basketball game. That is absolutely ridiculous. One of the most electrifying, high-flying box office players this game has ever seen, and especially in this decade, when you had a team like Lob City back in their day. Blake Griffin was an electrifying athlete, and he has developed a jumper over the years, but at this point, he's just a pricey, high, flashy role player. And that's kind of like a guy like Carmelo Anthony over the past couple years has had his struggles. He's kind of found his niche in Portland being that third, fourth option. But Blake Griffin at this point is just overpriced and he's just a big name. I don't really see any viable trade options for him, but let's keep an eye out on Blake Griffin. On to the fourth topic. I briefly touched on it, but the Celtics struggles this year. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have been playing phenomenal like we expected. Jalen Brown really has proven though this year that he can be the number one option playing and averaging over 28 points per game this year while still shooting the ball very, very effectively. And Jalen Brown, especially in that game versus the Utah Jazz, was absolutely lights out in that first half. He definitely had his struggles in the second. But the big problem with this team has been the fact that Kemba Walker has regressed. I don't know what's going on with Kemba Walker. Like I said, I don't think that this is a time to absolutely panic. But maybe even the loss of a guy like Brad Wanamaker, who's now playing for the Golden State Warriors, definitely hurts their depth on the bench. Of course, Marcus Smart's had some injuries. And even though I have Jalen Brown starting in the All-Star game, just because the Celtics are still a better team than maybe a guy like Bradley Beal. The Celtics need to do something to revamp this team, get themselves over the hump, because right now it's not looking very good. And I don't even know if they can make the Eastern Conference Finals with the way things are going right now. Brad Stevens needs to step it up. And speaking of stepping it up, let's move on to the Utah Jazz, who are continuously surging winners of 19 of their last 20 games. Quinn Snyder did not, Quinn Snyder today was just announced as the Western Conference All-Star coach. Props to him because the Jazz started the year off 4-4 four and four like they typically do, so a sub-500 team, but they have really stepped it up. They are now the number one team in the power rankings as well. They're a top five offensive and defensive efficiency team. We saw in the last couple games versus the Milwaukee Bucks, the Miami Heat, that was on a back-to-back. -back. 
They shot 29% from three versus the Miami Heat, struggling, but they still found a way to win by 18. They beat the Milwaukee Bucks 115 to 129 while shooting the ball lights out. And both of these games were without Mike Conley. Now the Jazz play the LA Clippers twice now tonight on Wednesday and on Friday night versus the LA Clippers yet again. We're going to see how they do, even though Kawhi Leonard's questionable, Paul George is out, Nicholas Batum's out. The Utah Jazz have been surging. Let's see if they can keep up that hot streak and let's see what they can do. On to the next team in the Western Conference. We're going to be talking about Anthony Davis and that Achilles. He re-aggravated his Achilles, and this is not looking like a great sign for the Los Angeles Lakers. Even though LeBron's an MVP candidate, he's still the best player in basketball in my eyes. You can make the case for Kevin Durant. I would still give that notch to a guy like LeBron James. But LeBron James is not getting any younger. And even though this team is still great, this team is not winning a championship, nor are they even making the NBA Finals without Anthony Davis. That is how elite this guy is. Anthony Davis has for sure taken a step back this year, still, still averaging 23 points per game, eight rebounds. And look, we know he's still a great defensive player, still a great offensive player. He's definitely been battling some injuries, but AD is the key to this team, not taking away from LeBron, but LeBron is not winning without Anthony Davis. They need to rest up Anthony Davis, do not let him play in that all-star game and let Anthony Davis get back, get healthy. Do not rush him whatsoever because that Achilles could come back to bite him, not just this year, but for the immediate future for the Los Angeles Lakers. Another topic in the NBA that I definitely wanted to discuss was John Collins and the Atlanta Hawks trying to trade him. John Collins last season denied a $90 million contract extension with the Atlanta Hawks. And I think this Atlanta Hawks team right now with obviously Trey Young being the headliner, the young MVP player caliber that he is. And he's actually surprised me since coming out of the draft. I did not realize how fantastic this guy was going to continuously be. John Collins, I think, is the second young, best young player on this team, along with a guy like Cam Reddish. And John Collins has been playing fantastic. But the fact that they want to shop him is actually a very big surprise to me. I like Atlanta's roster very much. Like I said, Trey Young, John Collins, Clint Capella. You got Fernando coming off the bench. You've still got Herder, Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter. They've got nice, solid pieces. And the fact that they want to get rid of one of their cornerstone pieces very much surprises me. Let's keep an eye out on that John Collins situation as well. And now the last topic I want to discuss in the NBA is going to be James Harden in that comeback win versus the Phoenix Suns. They were down early and without Kyrie Irving and of course KD's been in protocols due to COVID-19. We saw James Harden take a huge step for this team. James Harden's been damn near averaging a triple double this year. And while he has been playing fantastic, this was the game that we wanted to see from James Harden and see what he can do with this Brooklyn Nets team. He is the key to this team. And that's not saying that Kevin Durant's not the best player, but when it comes to playoff time, James Harden is going to have to be the one to hit the big shots occasionally and to facilitate the ball properly and accordingly, because we already know what Kevin Durant's going to get you that efficient bucket getter. And we already know what Kyrie's going to get you that clutch playmaker who's still going to shine. James Harden's going to be the guy that has to get them over the top and let's see what James Harden can do. He played a fantastic game versus the Phoenix Suns. Now I want to move on to the NFL talking about trade rumors with Deshaun Watson. The Panthers were set to say that they were going to move all in on a guy like a Deshaun Watson. The rumor was that they would be offering up three first round picks and their elite all, all pro running back Christian McCaffrey. I think if I'm, if I'm the Houston Texans, I keep that as my third option, and that's not because that's not already an amazing trade offer. You're getting an all-pro, elite, once-in-a-generation type of running back in a Christian McCaffrey who can move out to the slot and do everything you want offensively. But if you're going to bring in Deshaun Watson, if you're the Carolina Panthers, wouldn't you want him to have a Christian McCaffrey? I would give up everything but a Christian McCaffrey. If I'm the Houston Texans, I wait for the New York Jets or the Miami Dolphins to potentially make me a better offer with the draft selection and draft capital that they have this year and next year. So if I'm the Houston Texans, I keep an eye out for the Carolina Panthers. I keep that in my back pocket, but for now, I hold off on that offer, even though it's still very good. And the last topic I want to discuss in the NFL is going to be J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt was released by the Houston Texans. And the Texans have had some notable offseason losses and just losses in the last couple years. Of course, a couple years ago, we saw that they traded for Laramie Tunsil and Kenny Stills giving up two first rounders to the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins now have the number three overall pick from that trade, which was the Houston Texans pick. So the Houston Texans essentially lost their top three pick in this year's draft, having no first round picks this year, which came back to bite them. Of course, DeAndre Hopkins went out the door. They acquired David Johnson. And now Deshaun Watson went out the door and J.J. Watt's been released. Let's see where J.J. Watt wants to go. You've got notable teams like the Cleveland Browns, the Tennessee Titans, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the 
the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Green Bay Packers all on the eyes of JJ Watt. Let's see what he wants to do. I don't think any of those options are a bad options. Of course, the big name is going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers so we can go team up with his brothers, but let's see where JJ Watt goes. Hey, that's it for this 10 for 10. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe down below. And like I said, I'm going to link to all of our socials and our Patreon down in the description below. Make sure you guys go give us a follow and drop a like, like I said, if you enjoyed the video. 10 for 10 will be coming out at least once a week. So make sure you guys go check out next week and last week's video. I'm going to link to that above as well. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much. And we'll catch you guys next week.